Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. Today we will be talking about face fill parameters. I have received a lot of requests to make a video on face fill parameters. Ultimately, I thought of making a video on face fill parameters. I have done an analysis before making this video and I will I will share the analysis with you and I hope this analysis will bring some transparency about these two parameters. We will talk about how exactly those parameters can guide your stability or accuracy of the model because sometimes your simulation may be stable, it is, it is running but that doesn't mean that you are getting an accurate solution. So you have to make a balance be between the accuracy and the stability of the solution. And that is why two-phase flow problems are a bit complicated. Whatever you run, that may not be the correct solution. So we should be very careful. After doing every simulation, we should validate against experimental observations or previous reports. So those are the rule of thumbs. Now I will uh, share a presentation with you, which I have actually prepared from the available data. All the data or most of the data have been taken from COMSOL itself. There are various sources. They have put in those information to various sources. So I have collected them. So there are two parameters. One is called mobility tuning parameter. I'll show you before I name it. So if you can go here, this is under face fill. And if you go to the face fill model, you'll be seeing these two parameters. One is parameter controlling interfacial thickness from the name itself. You can understand what is the function of this particular parameter. And the other is mobility tuning parameter. So I have jotted down these two. So the first one is your, this one is mobility tuning parameter. And this one is the parameter controlling interfacial thickness. So the rule of thumb, as per the COMSOL, what they are saying, this parameter has to be or it could be half of the H max where H max is the maximum mesh element size. And this, this particular parameter controls the thickness. So if you, if you take it a very high value, then your interface will be diffusive and you may actually miss the information what is happening at the interface. So sometimes suppose you are studying some hydrodynamic instability. In that cases, seeing through the interface is very important. Your interface should be sharp enough to observe the phenomenon. In those cases, uh, it is recommended that you should use a small value of the epsilon. Now, what does this small means? Because when we say small, it becomes qualitative. So the idea is you calculate this 0.5 into H max. If you are trying to get a very sharp interface, then put a value which is lower than this 0.5 H max. If your simulation is not running, not becoming convergent and you are working with say a meter scale, then uh, you can even take few millimeters of interfacial thickness. So let us uh, check how what exactly they have taken in their model. So here, uh, if you see, the parameter is taken as 6.5 e minus 6. So now let me just calculate the mesh maximum element size. So if you see, the meshes are rectangular meshes, square meshes, and now I right click here, I click on statistics. If I click on statistics, it will show me how many number of grids are there. There are 8073 mesh elements and the mesh area is 0.12 mm square. So let me calculate. So I have taken the calculator. So I have 0.12 divided. This is the said divided by 8073 and we need to do a square root of this so it is becoming around 
for e minus 7. So each element is approximately equal to 4 e minus 7 and half of that would be this. So exactly this could be the value of epsilon. So e to the power minus 7 but what they have taken? They have taken a value which is if you can see they have taken in 10 to the power minus 6 maybe they have taken 10 times higher uh, if my calculation is correct otherwise you can redo the calculation so again I am telling when you when you take a higher value than the calculated one that means your simulation will be more convergent I mean your simulation will run better but for for a sharp interface it is recommended that you take a very low value small value now let us look at the mobility tuning parameter which they have taken as 50 so mobility tuning parameter let us go to the presentation again so as Comsol recommended this mobility tuning parameter should be equal to u h max 3 root 2 sigma epsilon where sigma is the surface tension of the interface or interfacial tension this u is the maximum possible velocity of the interface normal velocity of the interfacial movement and this epsilon is nothing but this one now this h max by epsilon you can understand epsilon is equal to 0 0.5 into h max so it will be cancelled out so it gives you 0 0.5 so it basically has u in the uh, in numerator and you have sigma in the denominator so this is basically proportional to u by sigma and in a comsol block they have actually mentioned is that this inter mobility tuning parameter is proportional to u by sigma now let me talk about what happens if you choose a very la large value of mobility tuning parameters a large value of mobility tuning parameter gives better stability of phase field variable and hence we achieve higher probability of convergence sometimes you carry on your simulation and your simulation doesn't run I will recommend that you give a higher value of mobility tuning parameter then your simulation will run but you cannot give any value because then your simulations result will be incorrect similarly a small value gives better insight of sharp interface again if you want a sharp interface you give a small value but sometimes a small value will lead to not con non-convergence of your simulation so again and again i'm telling you may have to play around with these two parameters and then you have to set your simulation you need to see that for a for a desired range of val parametric values your simulation is running at the same time it should be validated against the available results then you can be sure okay your simulation is correct now i have also calculated this value as we have seen in the capillary rise example the mobility tuning parameter value they have taken as 50 so i have jotted down the parameters so in capillary rise they are working with water air system so the surface tension is 0.07 h max they have taken 6.5 e minus 6 and this u it's not 0 0.001 it's it could be maximum one meter per second for this capillary rise how can i understand this is maximum because let me show you so this is the yeah so here you can see the rise is 0.5 and they have taken a time of say one so one milli millisecond so in one millisecond it is expected to rise up to this so it would the value of velocity will be maximum one even it is if it i mean it is not even one it would be somewhere in 0 0.05 meter per second but for the sake of calculation i have taken it one so if the velocity is one i have put all the values so the param mobility tuning parameter is coming as 6.73 if i reduce it by half that means 0 0.05 then the mobility tuning parameter will become 3 
So this calculation says the mobility tuning parameter is 326 but they have actually taken the parameter as 50 and that is why the simulation runs very nicely. So whatever they suggest they also not follow the exact same law because of the convergence so it is better to play around with the parameters again and again I'm telling and then decide on the factors. Thank you. I hope this video was helpful. If so, share this video with your peers and do like our videos so that we can get motivation to make more videos.